Thank you for the introduction and welcome to my talk today on Risk Evaluation and Mitigation Strategies, REMS, for generic drugs. The objectives for today's presentation are to provide background information on REMS and identify the REMS requirements for abbreviated new drug applications, ANDAs, Describe the ANDA submission process for REMS, elements to assure safe use of TASU products, and discuss the creating and restoring equal access to equivalent samples, CREATES Act, and its implications for ANDAs. Let's first start out by talking about what is a REMS. The Food and Drug Administration Amendments Act of 2007 provided a new safety authority under Section 901 that requires applicants to develop and comply with REMS, develop a required risk management plan that uses risk minimization strategies beyond professional labeling to ensure that benefits of the drug outweigh the risks. Some examples of the types of risks REMS requirements aim to mitigate, the risk of serious infection, some possible REMS actions are patient education on initial warning signs prior to prescribing, the risk of severe allergic reaction with REMS actions of healthcare professionals must be certified prior to administration of the product, the risk of liver damage with the action of liver function monitoring while patients are taking the drug, the risk of severe birth defects, which we see quite often, unfortunately. Um, the action would be negative pregnancy tests prior to dispensing each prescription. And when does FDA require a REMS? Before approval, if the FDA determines a REMS is necessary to ensure the benefits of a drug outweigh the risk, or post-approval, if the FDA becomes aware of new safety information and determine that a REMS is necessary to ensure the benefits of the drug outweigh the risk. Some possible components of a REMS. A REMS can include one or more of the following, a medication guide or patient package insert, a communication plan for healthcare providers, although this is not required for ANDAs, an implementation system, and finally, elements to assure safe use, a TASU. Let's first discuss implementation systems. A REMS may include an implementation system related to the following elements, certification of pharmacies and hospitals, healthcare settings, and safe use conditions. It may require the sponsor take reasonable steps to monitor and evaluate implementation of such elements by healthcare professionals and work to improve implementation of such elements. Another component, the elements to assure safe use. So depending upon the risk, a TASU are required medical interventions or other actions by healthcare professionals prior to prescribing or dispensing the drugs. Some actions may also be required in order for the patient to continue on treatment. A REMS re may require any or all of the following, certification or specialized training of healthcare providers who pres prescribe the drug, certifications of pharmacies, administration of drug in limited settings such as hospitals, dispensing of drugs only with evidence of safe use conditions, patient monitoring, and enrollment of treatment patients in registries. An example of a REMS with a TASU would be Vigabatrin, and this drug is used for the treatment of epilepsy and infantile spasms. This helps what we see typically is the risk of new and worsening vision loss, including permanent vision loss. And the elements in the REMS include patient, excuse me, prescriber certification, pharmacy certification, patient enrollment, periodic vision assessments, and assessment of patient's response to the drug. Another example of REMS with a TASU is ambercentin. 
This is used for the treatment of pulmonary arterial hypertension, and the risks seen are the risks of birth defects. The elements of the REMS for this drug are provider certification, pharmacy certification, and patient enrollment and monitoring. Okay, so now moving on to what the REMS requirements are for ANDAs. If the RLD has a REMS, then all ANDAs must also have a REMS in one of the following pathways. The ANDAs must join an already established shared system REMS with the TASU. And these shared system REMS consist of a program that generally encompasses multiple prescription drugs and is developed and jointly implemented by two or more application holders. The ANDAs can work with the RLD to develop a new single shared system REMS with the TASU. The ANDAs can pursue a separate comparable system from the shared system of TASU REMS and work independently from the RLD. Or for medication guide only REMS, this does not require the ANDAs to interact with the RLD. So what does a separate REMS for ANDAs entail? They must have the same goals and the same ATASU. And some important things to note are the REMS must achieve the same level of safety. How the elements are operationalized may differ, but applicants should explain and justify any differences in operations. Things to consider in developing a separate REMS program for ANDAs. Will the operational differences shift burden to other stakeholders? And will these differences cause confusion for stakeholders? Will the operations allow for other ANDAs to join the program? Shifting gears slightly to look at now the CREATES Act, the Creating and Restoring Equal Access to Equivalent Samples Creates Act was passed in December of 2019. This act provides a new pathway for developers of drugs and biological products to obtain samples of brand products. It also facilitates the timely entry of lower cost generics and biosimilar versions of those drugs and biologic products. In relation to REMS, previously, an ANDA was required to submit a waiver of the requirement to develop a single shared system with the RLD for ITASU. The waiver provision provided an alternate pathway for approval of generic drugs if a single shared system was not feasible. Now, with the passing of the CREATES Act, this act removes the requirement that states an ANDA product and its RLD shall use a single shared system unless a waiver has been implemented. This allows the ANDA applicant to develop a proposed REMS that uses a different comparable aspect of the ATASU. An adequate rationale to support any deviation from the RLD REMS should be provided. And a recent um, example of this under the new CREATES Act would be the pomalidomide REMS program is an example of a separate REMS program approved in October of 2020, which consists of ANDA only products. <laughs> when an ANDA applicant gets ready for submission, a REM submission is not required at the time of initial and of filing, but a statement of intent regarding the REMS pathway is recommended. The Office of Generic Drug notifies each and applicant of the REMS requirement by sending a REMS notification letter. The RNO outlines the REMS requirements for the applicable listed drug and provides instructions on joining an established shared system REMS or developing a separate comparable system. Once an application has gone through the whole approval process, there are some post-approval REMS requirements, one of which is assessments. With respect to each REMS goal, 
an assessment of the extent to which the REMS is meeting the goal should be conducted. Information provided in these assessments can be survey data, summary of adverse events, prescriber compliance, use data, and number and percentages of patients who were monitored for potential severe adverse events during treatment with the drug. Every REMS for an NDA must have a timetable for submission of assessments of the REMS. REMS can also require additional assessments or alternatively they can be eliminated after three years. However, it is important to note that these assessments are only requested of ANDAs in separate shared systems consist consisting of ANDAs only. Another post-approval requirement for REMS is modifications. A sponsor may submit REMS modifications proposing addition, modification, or removal of any goal or element, and there must be adequate justification for this proposal. The FDA must review and act on REMS modifications within the timeframe specified in the guidance included below. Additionally, after a REMS is approved, the FDA may require submission of a proposed modification if it is determined that one or more of the goals or elements should be added, modified, or removed from the REMS to ensure the benefits of the drug outweigh the risks and minimize the burden on the healthcare delivery system of complying with REMS. And finally, I just wanted to provide some additional information and references for you to look at if you need more information on the topics that I provided today. And let's go ahead and move on to our challenge question. So the first question is, which of the following statements about REMS is not true? Letter A, if the RLD has a REMS, then all ANDAs must also have a REMS. B, a REMS is required before approval if FDA determines it is necessary to ensure the benefits of the drug outweigh the risks. C, a REMS is required post approval if FDA becomes aware of new safety information and determines that a REMS is necessary to ensure the benefits of the drug outweigh the risks. Or D, every ANDA must have a timetable for submission of assessments of REMS. And I'll go ahead and give you a few moments to consider those options. Okay, so which of the following statements about REMS is not true? And the answer is letter D. Every ANDA must have a timetable for submission of assessments of REMS. As we discussed earlier, assessments are only requested of ANDAs in separate shared system REMS consisting of ANDAs only. Moving on to challenge question number two. What are the possible components of a REMS for ANDA? A, medication guide or patient package insert. B, communication plan for healthcare providers. C, implementation system. D, elements to assure safe use of TASO. Or E, letters A, C, and D. Again, I'll give you a few moments to consider these options. Okay, so our, for our question, what are the possible components of a REMS for ANDA? The answer to this question is letter E. Choices A, C, and D. For letter B, communication plans are not required for ANDAs. And in conclusion to my presentation today, REMS are a valuable tool for patient safety. They can employ a variety of strategies to ensure benefits of a drug outweigh risks. They are specifically tailored to a particular drug and a particular risk. REMS programs are often shared by multiple application holders for ANDAs and NDAs. 
Thank you for attending my talk today on REMS and generic drugs. Again, my name is Lauren Gillis and my contact information is here. So please feel free to reach out with, to me for any additional information or questions that you have today. Thank you and have a good afternoon.